So there's a lot of hype around ChatGPT right now. And if you're not familiar, it's an AI chatbot that can do a lot. In fact, I can ask it to explain what it is and in the tone from Snape from Harry Potter, because why not? So the goal of this video is to expand a little bit more beyond the cool things that you can do with ChatGPT, since you can find lots of awesome resources for that online, and I'll link to them in the bio, uh, but rather cover how ChatGPT works and take a deeper look at the transformer architecture that forms the basis of the model. Okay, so looking at the name ChatGPT, we can infer from the first part that it uses a chat interface. So I type some input, the program returns some text it generated, and that's all fine and dandy. The second part is a little less intuitive, GPT stands for Generative Pre-Training Transformer. What is that? Okay, so the model is generative because it is able to generate new text based on the input that it receives. Pre-training refers to the process of feeding the model tons of books, articles, and other human-generated text to teach it the patterns and structures of human language. So when ChatGPT generates some new text, it doesn't just spew garbage. From the pre-training step, it's learned what's coherent to humans. Okay, great. Now we're at Transformer. I'm going to give you two explanations depending on how deep you want to get. So here's a shorter one. A transformer is a type of machine learning model used for natural language processing tasks, such as language translation and text summarization. It uses this technique called self-attention to weigh the importance of different parts of the input when making a prediction, allowing it to understand the relationship between words in a sentence. Skip here if you're satisfied with that explanation about transformers, otherwise I'm going to go into it a little bit more in depth because I think they're super fundamental to understanding how ChatGPT works. So the transformer architecture was first introduced in a 2017 paper by Google researchers and has since revolutionized the field of natural language processing. Prior to the transformer, most neural networks used for language tasks employed a type of architecture called recurrent neural networks, or RNNs. RNNs process sequences of data by passing the output of one step, or a time step, as input to the next time step. While RNNs were effective at processing sequences of data, they had a number of limitations. For one, they have difficulty processing longer sequences of data, as the gradients of error signal will become very small or almost vanish as it's passed through many layers. Additionally, RNNs were unable to take fully advantage of parallel computing, as they needed to process the sequence one time step at a time. The transformer architecture addressed these limitations by introducing the concept of self-attention. Self-attention allows the model to selectively focus on different parts of the input rather than processing the entire sentence in a sequential manner. This is done by computing a set of attention weights which indicate the importance of each part of the input when predicting the next word. The transformer also introduced the concept of multi-head attention, which allowed the model to attend to multiple different parts of the input simultaneously, which allows the model to learn different types of relationships between the input, leading to a more robust understanding of the language. Another advantage of the transformer is the use of a technique called positional encoding. So positional encoding allows the model to understand the relative positions of words in a sentence, even though the model is not processing the sequence in a sequential manner. As you can guess, the transformer model has been very successful in natural language processing tasks. And besides just being used for GPT-3, it's also been applied to other areas like computer vision and speech recognition with similar success. So putting everything together, when you use chat GPT, the chat interface sends your message to the GPT model. The GPT model then processes your message using its transformer neural network and generates a response based on the input it received. The response is then sent back to the chat interface, which displays it for you to see. So yeah, that's ChatGPT. Also, a lot of my knowledge on machine learning actually came from a class I took at Caltech called CS156. Professor Yasser, who teaches that class, actually made it a totally massively open online course called Learning from Data. So if you're interested in learning about machine learning, I totally recommend it. It's a great resource. You can even see the homeworks that I did. You can take the tests that I did and watch all the lectures at your own pace. You don't even have to sign up. So it's not an ad. I just think it's a really great resource. And if you've made it this far, as a reward, you get a little bit of a secret of mine. I actually use ChatGPT to help write chunks of this video. I had to continue adding parameters until the script kind of looked the way I liked, and even then I actually found some incorrect information. Still, I incorporated some chunks of the script that was written by ChatGPT in this video, including the longer explanation about transformers. So let me know if you could tell in the comments below, and subscribe for more videos.